Hi everyone, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. This is my friend Brittany. Hi. Today, we're going to be working with mid-back pain, otherwise known as lower thoracic pain. Now, this can manifest in a few different ways. When people say I have mid-back pain, have them point it out, because what they consider their mid-back might be vastly different from what you conceive of as the mid-back. So some people may say down here, in which case we're probably thinking QL and hips. Some people may even point to more up here, at which point we're probably thinking rhomboids and trapezius and other stuff like that. But if they're talking about this lower thoracic region, there's a muscle that I'd like you to investigate. It's called the serratus posterior inferior. Lives about right here. So you may know about the serratus anterior, which lives on these lateral ribs over here and connects to the scapula. You may know about serratus posterior superior, which lives under the scapula here. We'll probably talk about that more in another video. Serratus posterior inferior has a lot in common with the other two because it consists of some finger-like projections that have to do with breathing. These originate from the last two thoracic vertebrae, so T11, T12, and the first two or three lumbar vertebrae. If you'd like to find these, just realize that the lumbar vertebrae you'll no longer be able to palpate ribs. So find the last floating rib and follow it up to the spine, you'll find T12. So from L1 and L2 up through around T10, there are going to be these four or so finger-like projections coming from this fascia that lives right here and latching onto the undersides of these ribs. When these contract, they depress the uh, rib cage and they help you exhale. These are also core muscles. They have to do with all of the activities of daily living, the moving, the twisting that you do. If they're doing a lot of work in front of themselves and they're allowing their posture to slouch instead of keeping this low back curved, then that can be a major contributor. If someone has acute pain right here, Realize that this is also the referral site of kidney pain. Now, we can't diagnose as massage therapists, but if they're having acute pain and it's accompanied by fever, or if they're having acute pain and they can't identify why, if it's sudden and if it's not going away, please refer them to a doctor. But if this is a chronic problem, they've been checked for other issues, I bet you a million bucks that serratus posterior inferior is involved. Now, with mid-back pain, I will definitely investigate these other nearby areas, like the region of QL. QL also attaches right along here, so if there's pain right here, then QL may actually be the culprit. I'll also investigate lower trapezius, because it latches in right around T12, so if there's pain down here, I wouldn't be too surprised if trapezius was dysfunctional or pulling too hard or too stretched. So definitely investigate this far-reaching tissue. But if I have decided to work with serratus posterior inferior, I want to work with rotational forces. So I'm not just going to work up and down the spine, I'm going to work from side to side. I'm going to work with these broad sheets of fascia. We can definitely do some trigger point work, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. But if I can get this fascia engaged, and if I can get this entire region to soften up, then serratus posterior inferior will follow. So before I dive into trigger points, I'm going to work away from the spine. And I can do this from the opposite side of the table like I'm doing now. Or I can do it from the same side of the table. For this application, I like to use open fists. Don't apply those knuckles to the spine itself. Wait until you've cleared the spine, then you can apply that weight. And then just drag toward yourself. And then down toward the table. For this myofascial style, think origin to insertion and beyond. So I'm going out past where those little finger-like projections attach. I'm coming all the way to the side. I'm 
fact, working with these lateral ribs here would be a great idea because these serratus muscles are involved in breathing. So all of these other muscles that are involved in breathing, including the uh, intercostal muscles and all of these thin sheet-like muscles of the back, these are all dealing with breathing. If I can get them to lighten up, sometimes the serratus muscle will be happier. So I also want to work longitudinally with the spine. I want to create space between these ribs and between the pelvis and the low ribs. To do this, I'll traction in one direction while I do a nice myofascial technique up in the other direction. I consider any move that grabs these big sheets of tissue and drags them along to be in that myofascial category. I can use any tool for this. I could use knuckles, I could use an open fist. A great tool for this application is the forearm. Engage that tissue. If you'd like to see another video on forearm use, click in the corner there. Just make this slow and make this at that 45 degree angle. So I'm pressing toward her head as much as I'm pressing down toward the table. And once I've warmed this area up, I, I, I won't have just focused right on this area with laser-like intensity. I'll have done some general back warm-up. I'll have done some of those nice twisting and transverse moves, then some nice longitudinal moves. And now I'm getting into more direct work. On most of your clients, you won't be able to palpate serratus posterior inferior. On those that you can, just realize that the tissue direction is this way, originating from the spine and going superiorly. And so if you strum across what, what might feel like little guitar strings as you're going in this direction, you are on them, my friend. Even if you can't palpate them, though, you can still look for trigger points here. So Brittany, as I'm moving through this area, let me know if I ever hit something that kind of jumps out at you. It suddenly feels more sensitive than the rest of the tissue, okay? Okay. Thank you. Take some easy deep breaths. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So something that I'd like to point out about that is that I was largely static in a place where I expected there to be trigger points. And after a while it registered with the client. So do consult your trigger point charts, know where they tend to hide out, and go slow in those areas. Give them time to realize that, hey, this sensation is different. And Brittany, as you continue to breathe, let me know if that sensation reduces. Mm -hmm. So it's gone down? Mm -hmm. Great. So from here, I would likely move on and do a strip that was a little further out, so a little lateral to what I had already done. And then I probably wouldn't do a strip that was even further out because out here, as we get into these floating ribs and these lateral most lower ribs, things can get quite sensitive. I would probably want to keep a broader surface here. And you can still look for those increased areas of sensitivity this way. They might not jump out as readily, but working with these areas, just using this myofascial angle, can really work with these trigger points in a way that's less sensitive. And once I've worked more specifically with those areas, I'm going to end by making nice. I can do some nice, lighter myofascial release. I can throw in some Swedish and some Petrosage and some Effleurage. Just uh, work with this area as a whole. Try not to get too much laser-like focus. And I think that you'll find that more of your clients than you expect 
have some issues with serratus posterior inferior. All right, let me know how this goes. Give me some comments in the comments section. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.